Welcome back to Beer Ambassadors. I am your host, Mikael Woodward, and uh, this is Tasting Notes. Um, today is the day before my birthday. I've already enjoyed the new, the fifth, of, fifth edition of the Game of Thrones. It's a dark saison. I, I was in a bar, I was on tap, so I didn't get to do that here. But let me tell you, it was really good. It's dark. I don't get any roasty notes, but it was definitely... Um, had a, a tartness and a sweetness of this Belgian yeasty character, some spices. Very nice. And then I had Holy Goes by uh, Anderson Valley. Wow. Fantastic, phenomenal beer. Great goes. It's, it goes from like sweet to tart to salty on the front, middle, and back of your palate. Just really amazing beer. And totally different because the... Uh, the Game of Thrones is a 7.2, and the Holy Goes is a 4.2. So there's a 3. Point, you know, percent uh, difference in ABV. So one's a session ale, and one is not, of course. Um, but both really, really good. But I came home, and I'm having uh, a late lunch with my daughter, and um, you know, she wanted to have a Martinelli's. You can say hello. You want to say hello? Uh -huh. She wants to say hello. Hi. So Eliana is having. Martinelli's sparkling cider but because uh, she was having Martinelli she's like well Abba even though it's the day before my, your birthday tomorrow the 18th of April is my birthday she's like I want to toast with you I said well okay then we're gonna do tasting nuts so the long and short as I wipe my nose there is itching sorry uh, is I'm gonna do uh, since I had a farmhouse style ale I'm gonna stay with farmhouse and I have had this before but I've never done the Official tasting. So here's Flying House or Flying Fish. I'm sorry, Farmhouse Ale. It is a saison, a summer ale. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, it's pretty good beer. I mean, it's not as great as the ones I just had that I just told you about. So if you get to try those again, I had them both on tap, and that's hard to find everywhere. You can find them in bottles. I know that, and hopefully they're just as good in bottles. But I was impressed. Um, with what I had today uh, for my my early birthday beers. So, um, yeah, we're in a, you can put that in the cat collection. That's the flying, the flying uh, fish. Let's see the fish bone. You ready to go that way? All right. So, let's see how this pours. This is a a really light straw color with a nice white head uh, which seems to be uh, you know kind of staying around so part of what I like uh, is that my daughter's learning she won't drink and I'm not trying to get her drink because she's too young but the long and the short are she'll get to see what it looks like and understand a perception of beer what do you think it smells like Every beer smells <laughs> like the same to me. No. It yeah. always smells like banana does this to one, me. Does this one smell like banana, really? No. Does this one smell like that one similar? Does it smell? Smell Smell your cider. Smell your cider. I'm going to stir it up a little bit. Smell your cider. Smell it. The cider. And then smell that. Are they close? That one's sweeter. Yeah. But do you get a closeness here? Yeah. I do too. So, uh... You want? Okay. Yeah. All right. No, you smell. Oh, I did smell it. Yeah, it's a little sweet for me. But this and I, this what I like about this smell, and I'm gonna have to top it off now to really get this. I'm trying to. Helena likes to. Uh, she likes to smell things, including my beer. So um, I almost get a slight apple but I don't know if that was from that. But maybe even a papery finish, but. Uh, I get a weedy, light saltiness on the aroma. Okay, it's enough for you there. Go, go sit down. Yeah, I'm trying to get go, out of the yeah, picture. Go sit down. So, <laughs> what are you do with children? They want to be involved. And I want to encourage her to be involved in making her own podcast one day, uh, tasting notes, whatever she wants to do. So, um, I've just had a chicken sandwich lettuce tomato I think this pairs really well um, 
I can see why this call call this a summer ale. Because uh, if you had started in the late winter, maybe beginning of spring, and had it cellar, it would be perfect for summer when it's hot days. Uh, this is definitely a low ABV. Uh, it is uh, not quite as low. It's 4.6% ABV. Um, but I think it's a very, very nice beer. <clears throat> and I get a tartness. Almost like a more of a tart to more of a sour. It's like a, it's not really sour or tart. It's kind of a weird in between with the saltiness that's on the backside that follows through in the palate, which I find quite interesting, honestly. Um, and I like that salty character in a beer, and I think it pairs well with a lot of food. So I am uh, I'm actually going to take a picture. And you'll see me taking a picture because I put it up for um, untapped because I do a lot of that on tapped, right? And um, then I can post this on there when I'm, after I'm talking about these notes. But uh, I'm going to say this is um, a really pretty decent beer, Flying Fish. I'm going to just close my palate a little bit. Bread, crackers, these are technically sesame seed sticks. Um, you can get a little saltiness. Get something like that and some water and really cleanse your palate. It's not just between beers, which is really good to do, but also between foods. Kind of like uh, when you go to sushi and you have the ginger in between fish. It's really a palate cleanser. Mm. And when I do that, Oh yeah, there's just like it's almost even smoother from the front to the middle. I'm going back on the backside. Uh, the because I had something salty, the salt is a little less noticeable, but still apparent. It's just not as forward on the backside of the palate, but it's very nice. Um, so, anyways, this is uh, the Flying Fish Farmhouse Ale. And uh, it's my tasting notes for my birthday. I don't know if I'll get tomorrow or not. Uh, please remember, though, the uh, Game of Thrones fifth edition. It's the it's a it's something say oh oh it's it's the uh, the third eye raven or raven third eye or something like that. Pretty good. And then the um, the goes from Anderson Valley, which again I have to say I'm really 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 impressed with and um, that's got a longer name it's a really 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 long name I'm trying to get in there I don't know why I'm not getting uh... so it was the three three eye raven by Game of Thrones or really it's Omegon uh, brewery but um, then if you get the uh, the Holy Ghost and I'm just going to recommend it. I just have to talk about it a little bit more because I was so impressed with this beer. The Kimmy, the Yink, and the Holy Ghost Ale. What that... I understand Holy Ghost. I don't get the Kimmy and the Yink. I get maybe the whole wink wink at uh, Trinity thing, if you're into that thing. Um, the Kimmy, the Yink, and the Holy Ghost. I really got to go find out what that story is about. So anyways... Uh, this has been uh, Tasting Notes for Beer Ambassadors with your host, Mikael. I'm Mikael Woodward, and uh, I want to say uh, have a beer and toast me for my birthday, and I hope you're having a good one. Eleanor wants to say goodbye. Bye. All right. So, you going to take over my show when I'm done? Huh? When you get older? When you get old enough, you can take over my show? Sure. All uh, right. We'll see. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.